Roman Reigns has just become the new unified WWE Champion, so we'll take a look at everything that happened there. We'll also see what Bianca Belair had to say and some other events from Night 2 of WrestleMania. Let's start things off with Bianca Belair. We previously went over how the SummerSlam 2021 decision with Bianca Belair being robbed of the titles was a great decision after all because it led to Bianca to her second straight title win at WrestleMania. But winning the title at WrestleMania isn't the only thing Bianca is after right now. Bianca Belair has made it a little side goal of her own to defeat every single member of the Four Horsewomen. Before WrestleMania 37, Bianca had beat none of them, but after WrestleMania 38, she now has defeated three out of the four. Bianca defeated Sasha Banks at WrestleMania 37, Bayley in mid-2021, and now Becky Lynch at WrestleMania 38. Bianca took to Twitter to acknowledge that only one horsewoman remains. She had this to say, quote, Back to back, three down, one to go. Hashtag four horsewomen, end quote. And the last horsewoman remaining is most likely the hardest one to pin or submit, and that's of course Charlotte Flair. Charlotte easily has the most championships out of the four horsewomen, it doesn't go down easily. Bianca originally had her chance to defeat Charlotte Flair last fall on Raw, but those matches didn't end cleanly. Charlotte even said in multiple interviews that she wanted Bianca Belair to beat her for the Raw title back then, but it didn't happen, most likely because they wanted that big Becky vs. Charlotte match at Survivor Series. So Bianca is quietly building up this nice little side story of being a four-woman slayer, so to speak. Those four women have been the foundation of the women's division for over seven years now. You always see them win titles and being the face of WWE's brands. So for Bianca to come along and defeat every single one of them would be a big deal. It would be putting herself on their level, maybe even past their level. One little interesting fan theory out there is if we'll see a women's title unification match between Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. We obviously saw Roman Reigns just unify the two world titles, but no one really knows how that's going to work. Is Roman going to drop one of the titles in the near future, keep his main title, and head back to being just a SmackDown superstar, or is this slowly marking the end of the brand split? Hypothetically speaking, if we're approaching the end of the brand split, it would make sense for Bianca and Charlotte to have a big title unification story themselves. No one really expected Charlotte to walk out of WrestleMania as champion. Everyone thought that this would be Ronda's moment coming off her return, but she lost. So the title is still on Charlotte, which means good news for Bianca Belair. So it's just a really interesting idea to think about. We just saw that big title unification match for the men. So what if this happens for the women? You have Charlotte coming off the big Ronda Rousey win at WrestleMania and Bianca Belair coming off the big Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. That'll be quite the clash right there. Roman Reigns has made history at WrestleMania by defeating Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38 to become the new unified WWE Champion. Some fans were disappointed with the match, some were disappointed with the result, others were disappointed that there was no surprise at the end. The fans had started to trick themselves into thinking that The Rock would show up during the closing moments of WrestleMania for a stare-down with Roman Reigns and challenge him to a match at next year's WrestleMania in LA. It was a popular theory and some fans believed it, because what better way to bring The Rock back for the first time since 2019 than by having him return in front of a WrestleMania crowd? But as everyone knows, it didn't happen, so fans really let themselves down there with that big expectation. But strictly from a fantasy point of view, what would have been even more poetic would have been a return from The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. And here's why. This goes back to SummerSlam 2020. Bray had already suffered the embarrassing loss to Goldberg earlier in the year which still remains as one of the most inexplainable decisions ever. But Strowman had defeated Goldberg, so naturally, Bray was coming after Strowman to get it back. After a long grind back to the top and finally defeating Strowman for the title, Bray's moment was initially crushed by the unexpected return of Roman Reigns. Roman destroyed The Fiend after calling him nothing but a freak in a mask, 
and how he couldn't handle the responsibility of being a champion. Fast forward barely seven days later, and The Fiend's title reign was once again over as Roman Reigns pinned Strowman in a triple threat match. Although the history books say that Roman defeated Strowman and The Fiend in that match, this version of Roman Reigns never pinned that version of Bray Wyatt. So how do we bring that back full circle? Well, have The Fiend do exactly what Roman did, return unexpectedly after a big moment. That moment would have been the closing moments of WrestleMania 38. Roman Reigns closes the chapter with Brock Lesnar and becomes the new unified WWE Champion after such a long grind. Cue The Fiend's return to lay Roman out after Roman holds both titles up. With a character like The Fiend that is so built up about revenge, that would have been the ideal revenge spot. Roman Reigns returns unexpectedly at SummerSlam to lay you out after your big moment, so you come back unexpectedly to now lay him out during his moment. Plus, there's 70,000 people in the stands watching. Talk about a perfect mirrored sort of moment for Bray and Roman. The script would have been completely flipped from what we saw at SummerSlam 2020. A Bray Wyatt return to WWE may or may not ever happen, but as one fan said it best, it just hasn't felt the same since Bray was released. We see superstars come and go, especially over the last few years. Like nothing, but Bray's release really stung and hurt a lot of fans. And even the other little things that happen outside of the ring like 2K22, Bray was supposed to be heavily featured in the game. They had the continuation for the Alexa and Bray storyline in the game. They had a Firefly Funhouse backstage arena, the Fiend in the game, but following his release, all this great content for the game was forcefully removed before its release. And when you think about it, WWE still owns the rights to the Fiend character and all the other content, so they probably could have left it in the game if they so pleased, but they didn't. But that's just a fantasy scenario that would have been a great revenge moment for The Fiend and another big surprise for the fans. In other news, Conor McGregor recently tweeted about WrestleMania, which led to Becky Lynch responding to him. Conor started it off by saying this, quote, Why wasn't I at WrestleMania? They all fear me. That's why. End quote. Which led to Becky Lynch responding by saying, quote, Hey man, I could have used you. Bianca brought an army next year. End quote. Becky and Connor actually do have a friendship. She even did some voice acting work for some of his UFC matches back in the day. Connor was feuding with WWE superstars online and how he'll mop the floor with all of them back in 2016. And this new tweet from him sounds like the things he was saying back then. Connor is slowly approaching the end of his MMA career, and he does seem to give off the impression that he hates pro wrestling for being fake. But what if he got a check to appear for WWE? Everyone knows what Connor can do on the mic, so it would be interesting to see. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.